Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm David and this is Josh. Hi. And today we're going to talk about our Joe Nall experience and how we and almost what, died. And what an experience <laughs> it was from beginning to end. Epic. Yes. It was awesome. We rented an RV, a big one, a huge yeah. one. And how it, big was it? 28 footer. Wow. And I never drove an RV in my life, let alone a 28 foot RV. And uh, All Pro and Alliance Ohio, um, they're the place we rented the RV. They were awesome. Yeah. So nice. They gave us a discount. So All Pro, God bless you. If any of you want to rent an RV, go to All Pro, <laughs> especially if you're in the Northeastern Ohio area, close to Alliance Ohio. But it was awesome. <laughs> Beautiful RV. Yes, it was. And we set out in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. It was nine o'clock. Yes. We thought we would drive all night and get there really early, so we got an extra yeah. day. Yeah, because we were leaving on Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah. We yeah. left Tuesday night, and our goal was to drive until we got tired, and then pick up in the morning. And that was a really great plan, and it worked out pretty good. We actually yeah. arrived the next day in around one o'clock. Uh, around one o'clock, and started setting up. Yeah, yeah. And what a place. It is huge. 400 acres of huge in like, what, six flying fields, counting the heli field? Yeah. And we parked right by the lake and the electric area. Yeah, and in the mornings, uh, you woke up to this really great sound, like five in the morning. Of yeah, it was a 60% Piper Cub off the water with floats. Yeah, I was like, and it just cleared out. Wow. It was beautiful. <laughs> I think it's the best alarm clock in the world. I don't think you liked it as much. <laughs> no, because uh, we went to sleep pretty, uh, pretty late, and anyone that ever thinks about sleeping in the same vicinity as Josh, yeah. Rethink that because he <laughs> or bring earplugs. Yeah, he <laughs> snores like a T Rex sounds like. Like a T Rex. Uh, like, like a T Rex. Yeah, here's a picture of a T Rex and here's the sound of Josh snoring. <laughs> I, like, I took my earphones, plugged them in, turned up my audiobook. And like <laughs> 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 oh, but the weather. The weather was awesome. Oh, it was beautiful. Yeah. It was actually too good. Yeah, it was too hot we, we for thought, me. Well, yeah, he, he was melting big time. We, we got him a hat. Had sunscreen 50 on, uh -huh. and it was, uh, the sun was behind the clouds, and I still got burned while I was in the shade. Yeah. So it's really, it was hot. It was funny, the first day when we got there, since we had the lake just behind us, Josh's like, oh, I wish we brought us uh, any seaplanes, like water planes. Uh, but I did bring some floats. Yeah. Well, so, I, I was packing up planes, I saw floats, and I'm like, oh man, I don't have time for water planes. I just grabbed it and thought, I was honestly thinking your Spitfire. Ah, really? I wanted to put on your Spitfire, but then it matched the baby blender better. Yeah, <laughs> it matched perfectly. It was so beautiful. What are you doing? Try something irresponsible. We, uh, we want to fly on the float line, so I took these uh, Piper Cub floats and I married them to the baby blender in a harmonious way of uh, irresponsibility and kind of awesomeness. So we went out to the lake and the, the baby blender wasn't even treated for it. It was no, just raw paper. Just raw paper and foam. we thought it was going to crash horribly. We were like, uh, Josh, like, oh, should I take it off the grass first? We are like, no, take it off the water. It's going to be good. And I yeah. took the camera and walked out. Are we sure about this? Yeah. All right. Just go. Right. What's the worst that can happen? Nothing. Good. Hey, it broke. It looks so raw. The floats are this long. The plane is this long. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> it's just going through the air. And it was like, eee, and then take it on, and it's just plop. It worked good, and people wonder what we were doing, because I'm sitting there, and we're talking to people, and, and the baby blender's on my lap, and I'm just hacking away. <laughs> yeah. Sawing holes into the bottom of it, and rubber banding things on, and it yeah, looks it so... Great. It looked good, but it was put on so terribly wrong. Yeah, <laughs> so, no, it's awesome. They too. AMA is very passionate about getting people in the hobby and exposing people to the hobby. And yeah. obviously that's what our heart is too. So we teamed up with them. We set up a booth next to their simulator. We brought uh, the planes we had it with mm -hmm. us and the set up the Spitfires mm -hmm. and Baby Blender and yeah. the Cruiser. A lot of people showed up. Yeah, yeah, it was great. There was even a couple of nice gentlemen that actually showed up with their uh, swappables already built. Yeah. And I couldn't believe they had us ruin their planes by signing them. Yeah, it was great. So, uh, and they, we didn't have an FD3D with us. No. So they were nice enough to let us have their, that all the day. So just so we could show it. It was awesome. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. great. So thank you to all of you that stopped by. It was a great experience. It was great really to nice meet to every one of you. So that night, Bill Blair. Bill Blair. And, and actually, big shout out because he does his own videos. Yes. Amazing hey, guy. Whirly Bird videos. Check out his videos. This guy is crazy passionate about the hobby. Yeah. And he's crazy about something else, and that's feeding people. Yeah, it was great. He invited us to come over and eat his uh, meatloaf 
uh, cheese stuffed meatloaf wrapped, wrapped in, in bacon. bacon. I mean, that's honestly between going to Joe Knoll and, and the environment and the food we ate, you would have swore we were in heaven. So they fed us, and then by that time, it was nighttime. <laughs> yeah, and Bill said, hey, do you want to go and poke the compass guys? I'm like, well, what, what does that mean? mean, first of all? Yeah, what, know, what do you mean? Okay. Basically, so, he was saying, talk them into doing something stupid. Yeah. All right, we're going to do a little night flying with some spotlights and floodlights. Uh, I've got a 6 HV here. You're going to do what? Yes, we're gonna... night. yes sir. What? Uh, wait, I just, I'm just trying to understand. You're going to fly in the floodlights during the nighttime with a big helicopter. That's right. You're crazy. Some might say. In total, there were three people with a floodlight yeah. pointing their lights at the helicopter, a 700 helicopter, I yes. believe it was. What's this guy's name? Paul, Paul Peffley. And he is an amazing pilot. Yeah, I don't he really think, is. and he's so humble. I don't think he'd yeah. like us saying he's an amazing pilot, but Paul, frankly, you're an amazing pilot. Get yeah. over it. You're it was awesome. awesome. Um, so, <laughs> he, he takes it up and he's like hovering around like, this is really cool. How There's cool it looks. no lights on this helicopter. No, it's nothing. pitch black. Yeah. Except the floodlights. Yeah, and he's hovering it like this, and it's like he's going down like this. And it starts spinning. He goes, it. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it is like honestly like a kung fu movie with the heli. It's like, <laughs> you know, and everyone. Uh, what was it? Bill was like, Bill was like, he's like, you're gonna jump, and also he pops it up into a TikTok, and he goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and everyone's just jumping back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would oh. not want to be the guy at the spotlight like, because literally he covered so much space so quickly. They're just you know trying. To keep on him. But he knew exactly where oh. the uh, the sphere of light. Yeah. Because he was spinning around and checking all the edges before he went crazy. Yeah. He was just going around doing TikToks <laughs> and finding these the would, edge of the light. He would take it to the point where it just disappears and then come right back yeah. again. So they're like gone. And they're like, whoa! Everyone's just jumping yeah. backwards. It was <laughs> it was awesome. You think someone like this would will, will, will frankly be crazy? Like, you know, hyper and energetic. He was and so cool. like, that was fun. You know, he goes, I actually scared myself a little bit one part of it. You know? <laughs> yes. We were like, what? <laughs> well, how do you do that? What? Twiddle your thumbs. Words to live by. Or if I was flying, it'd be words I'd die from. But uh, he just such a cool, mellow guy. Yeah, thank you very much. That was one heck of a performance. A lot of times, people in the hobby, you know, you have the airplane guys and you got the heli guys, and they don't like each other. Get over it. You both are awesome because those heli guys treated us just like gold. Yeah. And, and really, you know, I know obviously you have whirling blades of death going back and forth and it's hard to fly a plane in that space, but that, they were that really is the cautious. Hobby. They were really, yeah. uh, other than that, they were really cautious. <laughs> <laughs> well, the guy had amazing skills, but you know, to see all the different aspects of this hobby on Joe Knoll. Honestly, I, I was telling people, it's like a Disneyland for yeah, the hobby. Yeah, that's a really good... It's, it's like Epcot. Energy. Everywhere you turn, there's a different aspect of the hobby. And all of it put together just makes the hobby that much more incredible. So, Yeah, it was it was yeah. great. And actually, Bill took out his creation after that, oh, which was a, cool. uh, a F550 uh, hexacopter, which yes. he put a hula hoop around and then... <laughs> he took it a step um, further. RGB lights that was controlled um, by yeah. a transmitter, yeah. and then he had an amplifier and two speakers hanging underneath MP3 it. player on the quad. Yeah, the uh, he, was, he was playing <laughs> the Star Trek, Star Trek Space. Space. The final, final frontier. frontier. <laughs> <laughs> it was playing around. It was, it was so hysterical. <laughs> Honestly, it felt like you were watching a production or something. And the funny thing is, he knew by the time like the, the one part got in the song, he knew he had to land because that was how he timed his, his flight. <laughs> yeah. so he knew, okay, I better get back now. And next day, we yeah. went up really early yeah. and got out to the electric flight line. It was our play day. It was our day to get on the flight line and, and really have some fun. Yeah, and just fly the, the crap out of our, our plane. We wanted to burn every one of our batteries. I wanted to puff some of David's and stuff. And, and we, we did. Which I did, yeah. And uh, we, we had fun. We took the Spitfires out. Yeah, and flew formation. Had a good yeah. time, and then the best people part. started showing up. So we play. We started playing past the transmitter. Which, by the way, if you're at a flight field and someone's like, "How's it fly?" Let them fly it. Yeah. Especially if it's one of the swappables, because guess what? You can build it again. It was great, and how people took to it and flew really put them through the their paces yeah. was awesome. There was um. Uh, let me find the Joe Joe Vermillion. Did I say that? Yeah. Right? Joe uh, Vermillion. He's from Precision Aerobatics. And he was rocking it. I mean, he that's... was doing low passes, inverted, just an inch or two off the ground. Yeah. It was and awesome. Just crazy slow passes and everything. It tracks so nice. And there was a young kid. Um, I don't mean to call him kid, but he was very young. Yeah. Uh, 
Hey, Kobe? Kobe. Kobe, Kobe Kenton. Kenton. Yeah, he could fly. Yeah. He really could. And he, and was he knew a, it. <laughs> yeah, he knew it. He was a great kid, though. He was, he's, yeah, he has a lot of charisma. Yeah. Buy the kit. It's awesome. <laughs> It was awesome. Um, yeah, it was. It was such a good time yeah. just just flying with the other guys. Yeah. Frankly, I just love playing, watching them fly the planes more than flying personally. It was so cool to sit here. You try, you try, and it was just going around, and you're running around like crazy, put batteries in everything. Yeah. And then after that, we went back to the tent, and yeah. we thought, hey, we haven't really built anything. Yeah. So we asked uh, one, a parent that was going past because we met these two, two kids, two amazing kids, Alex, Alex and Sarah. Sarah. Yeah. She. She chose an FT flyer, and he chose a Delta because he was ready for that next step. And and they both knew how to build. There really was, good. <laughs> yeah, there was no problem. Like, uh, so you fold this over, and she's like, oh, yeah. like that. And you're like, yeah. That, that's a good. That was what I was saying in my head. Exactly that expression. <laughs> and boy, they could they could lay that bead of hot glue down, and they're folding. Yeah. Very impressive. So, yeah, it was really cool. cool. So after. We were down building and we sent them off. The planes were awesome, the environment was awesome, the best part was truly the people. So, so we got invited by the high tech guys to come down to the 3D flight line. Oh yeah. And the 3D flight line, they put in a lake. It's only four feet deep. Four feet deep, just there, so that you can dunk your tail in. That's it. It's, it's pretty splash. big. <laughs> it's a very big lake. <laughs> yeah. And you can fly float planes off. Of yeah, it. they were planning on taking off, hovering over the lake with smoke on. So I show up. I had my tricopter with me. And next thing you know, he's flying, and there's these two, what, 120cc planes. Yeah, easy. Monstrous. <laughs> Monstrous thing. And I got some beautiful aerial of that flying yeah. around. And, and it was sleepy. great. See, yeah, the whole time he was hovering back here and just changing angles and getting the whole action. And it was great. While I was flying, I was following the wrong plane mm -hmm. at that time, unfortunately. So the other plane uh, was doing a touch with the tail. Yeah. Touched it a little too much, and he got sucked down. Turned into a water plane without floats. Yeah, but they're so such a great attitude. They just walked out and grabbed <laughs> it and drying it out. <laughs> just like pouring water. I'm like, is that really okay? You're like, yeah, it's just a little after an oil and the, you just yeah. dry it out and you fire it Be right up. Beautiful planes. The fact they do these things with these beautiful huge airplanes just yeah, awesome. it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, so the high tech guys asked me, hey, can you fly around our? I think it's area? a yak. Um, small compared to the other planes yeah but it was still pretty big <laughs> it was all over the place high energy plane yeah it definitely was and the pilot that was going to fly the high tech amazing plane, pilot yeah his name was uh sam swink another <laughs> mellow guy by the way all these guys that are high energy crazy flyers are just like yeah, cool, yeah, man. You you know? yeah you can follow me just yeah go ahead yeah um so Hey, he had this really smooth style. He yes. really could control the plane in every, at all places. There were no time you could see yeah. he was really losing orientation. He, he was doing rolling, um, he was torque rolling, but yeah. his tail was almost sticking in the ground like making a whirlpool. Yeah. It was the funniest thing. It's sticking in the water, he's spinning <laughs> around, keeping his orientation. And I gotta imagine if he starts tipping, that rudder doesn't have the authority when it's in the water. Yeah. So, no, it was crazy. Amazing job. So. We were flying around, the sun was setting, he, they had some problems getting it started, so it got darker yes. all the time. Darkness we, was setting in. But it was beautiful because the sky was really bright. Yeah. He was flying around doing these crazy maneuvers and I was just trying to follow him and yeah. the, the lake was just glass smooth, it, it was, was like beautiful. Yeah. So I got some really good footage of that. <laughs> and the funny thing, while he was doing that, I had my goggles tapped into his frequency, and I'm going to people and they're watching like this. I'm like, hey, you want to see what Dave's seeing? And they're putting it on, passing the goggles. He gave like more people an awesome ride because like, oh my gosh, you can see him like rocking back and forth. <laughs> but it was cool. Uh, yeah, it was so, great. Uh, so I was flying around, and all of a sudden, you know another what? plane what? shows up. When you're having fun, other people want to have fun with you. Yeah. We'll just say it that yeah. way. And that plane was green and blue. And purple. The Oh, was it? Mm -hmm. um, it just blended perfectly. I didn't want to crash into anyone, so I was trying to keep him in mind while I was filming the high tech guy. So I flew mm -hmm. down, and he was doing uh, a rolling uh, torque roll over yeah. the over the water, and I come in. He finished his roll, and as he, he finished his roll, yeah. he, he fired it. He fired it, and I'm like, whoa! <laughs> You can see me, I'm trying to give it full power, but the air is thinner up there, so oh, I don't uh, rise in humid. in humid, yeah, so it's really thin, yeah. so I don't climb as fast as I normally do. And you can see this plane just, and you hear this sound like, ding! And I was like, 
oh, 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 like pull up, oh, turn around. Did I crash him? Did I crash him? Look yeah. around. He's doing rolling harriers around the yeah the lake, like two feet of the ground. You could tell it definitely shook. Or, I don't see David shaking very often, but it messed with his head pretty good. Yeah. I'm like, oh, oh, wait, am I crashing? It's my battery. Did it cut something? Or I'm like, oh, off the lake. Then go back and landed it. And when I landed it, just like landed a bit crooked. I'm like, oh, I took it off. And I took it up and walked over, and he landed. Oh, oh dang no. it! What happens? Whack. I was wondering what the noise I thought you hit me. Yeah, no, I hit you. That's close. Wow, that was so good. And now I'm missing a landing gear. Yes. <laughs> the prop hit it and it took it cleanly off. So you're flying pretty close. <laughs> That's close enough. <laughs> we felt horrible about it. He's like, oh, no big deal. And he takes some CA. <laughs> he, he wicks CA into like the phrase of carbon fiber. <laughs> Props it again. It goes on <laughs> it again. <laughs> So. <laughs> they were just great guys. Oh, so, that so was nice. Wow, I was, that was that Amazing. was as close as I've ever been to just smashing something that big. I know you wouldn't say because you're humble about it, but probably some of the most amazing air-to-air -air footage it of 3D good, yeah. um, that I think you've ever caught. Yeah, that was pretty good, pretty especially good, since it's in 1080 and 60 frames. It looked just beautiful. Yeah, with the GoPro 3, right? Yeah, very it nice. was very really nice. good. And and Sleepy C, oh my gosh, I love that guy, and he's local. Yeah, we gotta get him out. Um, yeah, definitely. When yeah. we get our new location, we're definitely yes. bringing him and Nick, um, Nick Frederick from yes, yeah, from Nacho, Nacho Cheese. Cheese. Yeah, he's definitely a guy yeah, so. we need on. We met another really cool and this, person. This person is not a man; it is no. a lady. Her name is Jasmine Redenbach. <laughs> she is crazy passionate about educating too, and she's sponsored from all these different pilots. The neat thing about this is, is there's a weak spot with flight tests as far as education on the big monster gliders. Well, she puts out videos to uh, educate people as her build you know, sequence goes on. She brought a 43% 157cc gasser. That was her favorite beat that around was airplane. Yeah. It was huge, yeah. <laughs> and she, like she described it, it's like figure skating in the air. Yes. And that she, uh, really smooth 3D flying. Yes. She flies a lot of different planes, and uh, as you've seen her video, she's very graceful in the controls, and she'll she'll take off and she'll pop it, roll it, <laughs> pop it back, and go again. And, you know, very yeah. it, honestly, she flies like it's dancing through the air. You know, very smooth, very. It was really refreshing meeting her and yeah. uh, having a role model for all the girls out there, yes. and a lot of boys for that matter too. Yeah. Because yeah, she she was really. She was into it, where she modified her engine, removing the electric start on it to yes. get uh, to get it lighter for three D flying. Yes, she knows her stuff. So, so when nighttime comes at the three D flight line, it becomes crazy. Not alcoholic crazy. I know no, people think just, that's the case. No, it gets crazy with people putting lights <laughs> on their airplanes and doing some of the most insane things. Right. Ninety percent of the planes out there were all externally lit. Yeah, um, shining on the plane. Shining on the plane instead. Yeah, it was crazy and this huge plane mm -hmm. it had smoke he took off and just poured the smoke all over the lake it was hard to see and he was flying doing torque rolls in the light it was oh, in the smoke and it was it was <laughs> you know, beautiful for that matter we were getting bit up by mosquitoes really bad except for the 3d flight line so they must have put yeah. something in their smoke because the whole place was just smoked <laughs> yeah and we ended up ha hanging out with the high-tech crowd and sean spiker and oh, nick and love them and Sam and Roger and all of those guys we had such a good time we laughed until our bellies hurt so. it was yeah it was really good hanging out with you guys yeah and we love you the, the <laughs> when the high-tech guys showed up they had a lot of airplanes yeah. in the beginning of the week at the beginning of the week in the end of the week they only had the mentor flying basically they were they were crashing they were having so much fun and it wasn't because they're bad pilot. they were flying so much and flying so hard they would crash and be like you know, that motor on that plane over there would make this mentor fly really good. And they would scavenge it. And you see this carnage. It honestly felt like home with flight yeah. down here. Because you'd see carnage going around their tent, all the way around. And they were doing exactly what I think a hobby company should do. They were having fun with the hobby. Yeah, they were just having a <laughs> This blast. mentor ended up, it was stuffed with so many wires, LED lights everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, Pontoon. and it was six cell craziness. Yeah. <laughs> and it was so badly... <laughs> The thrust line and stuff was off. So you had to hold the takeoff up. They let me fly it first, or not first, but they let me fly it. Um, first one in the flight test group. They're like, yeah, hold, hold right rudder. And all of them, sometimes, right rudder, right rudder, right. I'm I was like, like, it's all the way over. And he's like, fight all it. It's like, <laughs> but once it got in the air, it was ballistic. And That's you're just crazy. flying, and there's so much power, you just get a couple trips, like, <laughs> 
Like, and they were flying around with that thing doing crazy stuff. They uh, and other people were flying at the same time, mm -hmm. and they had a couple of meters. Yeah, it survived five meters without a plane. I mean, what a great fun! That mentor is just yeah. incredible. Um, what so a powerhouse! We had a lot of fun, and uh, we thought the fun would trip Saturday morning, and it was kind of a disappointment. We woke up Saturday to on the on the RV, and it was. It went from calm rain to pouring rain yeah. to a little bit of rain to kind of mm -hmm. sunny. And the only people flying were the amphibians that were pretty yeah. waterproof. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. There were Icon A5s and, <laughs> um, and, be and yeah. the Havilland Beavers everywhere. <laughs> it's like, oh, we can fly. And, yeah. and they were related with pontoons. They didn't have lakes. The grass was wet, so they were just taking off and on everywhere. Uh, so we decided after taking a last shower, yeah. jump in the RV and just drive. Yeah, um, start heading home. Yeah, um, uh, except I get uh, car sick. Uh, horribly car sick. I, I, yeah, actually pretty bad. So I took one of those Dramamine. Dramamine, you should sponsor us because we can show you the effects. <laughs> you can get a suite anywhere with a little bit of Dramamine. Yeah, this is a picture before and this is a picture after. Long story short, he took his Dramamine and he was unconscious. It was nice and it was rainy, but it was a nice easy drive. Um, but then we got... We got into West Virginia. We wanted to thank the RV company and David obviously with his tricopter skills, we wanted to go to like a state park or a lake where we could park the RV and Dave could fly around it and just get, some, get some cool thank footage. you pictures for the RV company because you know all pros a small business and, and they did an exceptional thing for us. So, so Josh decides to <laughs> look at the map. Oh, there's a lake. Yeah, well, I'm gonna turn here. It's not. There's a lake. We saw a sign. Now, anyone that puts a sign up for a lake, obviously, it must be a special lake. <laughs> and it says public fishing, public camping. I get off the X, and I rib uh, David in the back. I'm like, David, we're gonna have you do it. Start waking up and stuff. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> I'm totally out. <laughs> okay, so it goes from a two-lane uh, paved road. This is great. We're going down a little windy. <laughs> All of a sudden, it goes. Shake, shake. It's still two lanes, but they only paved the center. So two tires <laughs> are on asphalt or concrete, and the other two tires on gravel. Okay, we're still okay. Mm -hmm. Then it gets narrower. So now you're sharing the road and getting off and letting people. We finally get to the, and what I thought was a state park. <laughs> it says campgrounds, what, three miles ahead? <laughs> and it turns into a single lane, but it wasn't around the shoreline. It starts going up the mountain. <laughs> I'm like laying in the back, like, I'm falling out. What's going on? Look oh. out. And there's a cliff right down. I guess the grade started here and then turned about here. Now this to this is not a big deal. Yes, it is. It's in an RV. In, a, in an RV that's 28 feet long and a single lane road going up the side of the mountain. It's a big deal. <laughs> so three miles into this, we see, okay, here's the campgrounds. It's a hard right <laughs> down a hill. I couldn't turn the RV if I wanted because the thing would, back tires would go off and we'd fall down the cliff. And I finally did this 20 point turn and we're going back down the hill. And then I get to see what the cliff really looks like on the other side. <laughs> it took us 30 minutes to, from the time we got into that three miles to the time we got out of that three miles. And afterwards, when we got back on the open highway, I felt like it was a tricycle in the middle of a field. That RV seems so small well, compared to that road because we were driving this narrow thing. That is a story of our Joe Knoll trip. Yeah, it was great. I would like to personally thank everyone we met. And yes. I'm sorry and we don't remember all of your names. Next time I think we're honestly going to get a pen and paper because there's so many special yeah. people. Everyone deserves to have their name mentioned fully um, with a picture because the best part truly um, was not dying, first of all. but It wasn't but, flying. It was meeting people. It was meeting the people. And uh, what incredible people are in this RC community. And um, it's a blessing to know you and get to connect with you on that level. And also, if you've never been to Journal, if you don't have... Uh, too long of a drive go it's just go it's penny. it's worth it it's not that expensive no and it's just a great experience it's truly a magical place and, and my funny thing when I was talking to my wife I was like Jen I wish I could bring you here she's like Josh do you realize you said magical five times <laughs> yeah. in this conversation I think it was more than five times <laughs> yeah and uh, thanks for watching um, this rather long episode <laughs> if you've been to journal write something we want to hear your experience as well, not only yeah. ours. Yeah, and also if there's good ways to prevent from going down cliffs in West Virginia, we'd like to hear that too. <laughs> yeah, so thanks for watching. See you next time. See you next time.